Hello and welcome. My name is Anya Pafis and I am a solution designer with Cerner. I'm located out of Malvern, Pennsylvania, and I am the tool lead for JIRA at Cerner. We're here today to talk a little bit about how an enterprise-level company started using Portfolio for JIRA. As I'm sure many of you know, it is a challenge to implement a new tool and new processes and still keep everyone happy. So today I'm going to share a little bit about my experiences in working with the tool and all of our users. So let's get started. We've got a few topics to cover today, but I'd like to start by telling you all a little bit more about Cerner. Cerner is a global organization supplying healthcare information technology to hundreds of clients, both large and small, and everywhere in between. We provide over 400 different solutions to our clients that include clinical, financial, and operational technologies. Cerner is based out of Kansas City, Missouri, but we also have offices in over 26 countries with over 30,000 employees. We also provide tools to help our clients maintain their technologies and offer healthy lifestyle programs. All of our solution teams and hundreds of internal teams currently use JIRA for development, project management, and planning. Since we have so many different groups using JIRA for their day-to-day -day activities, we implemented four different JIRA instances. Now that we've been introduced, we're going to talk a little bit more about how Cerner uses JIRA today, before we start talking about how we introduce Portfolio for JIRA into the mix. Our first instance of JIRA, typically referred to just as JIRA, is primarily used by internal teams to track their development lifecycle. We also have some support teams in this instance, and we use it to create and sign off on different documents through an internally developed e-signature plugin, which is fully compliant with 21 CFR regulations. In total, we have about 10,862 users in this instance of JIRA, with over 900,000 issues, 1,477 custom fields, and 341 active projects. Our second instance of JIRA, called JIRA2, is used by both client-facing development teams and client-facing support teams. Since JIRA2 supports client-facing information, this is our most standardized instance. It is also our most complex instance since it integrates with many other systems, like our client issue tracking and financial tool sets. This is one of our larger instances as well, and we have over 12,000 users in JIRA2 with over 2,550,000 issues, 339 custom fields, and 793 active projects. Our third instance is our largest instance and is called JIRA3. This is used by internal teams for development, project planning, and DevOps activities. We have 17,870 active users in this instance today, and almost 3 million issues. We also have 3,575 custom fields, along with 1,022 active projects. This instance is also our most customized and unregulated instance, so we have each organization and project with a different scheme and structure. Our final and newest JIRA instance is called Secure JIRA and has been stood up in Cerner's secured network in order to support confidential data pertaining to federal organizations. We have only 90 users in this instance today due to its confidential nature and have a number of configurations set up behind the scenes in order to ensure that data is protected and ensures Cerner meets all federal regulations. So how does Portfolio for JIRA fit into everything? As we'll see in the next section of our talk, we were in desperate need for a more centralized and agile portfolio management tool. As many of you know, it can be hard to adjust to changes. It can be especially difficult when you need to try to convince hundreds of employees to make the jump as well. As Cerner introduced Portfolio for JIRA, we really had to work to convince people it was the right time to change, and we had to work to prove to people that it would work for them as well. When I think about our introduction of portfolio to our users, it reminds me of a sailing metaphor I've come across. When you adjust your sails, it means that although we might be propelled forwards, we also might have to make choices that put things on hold for a while, or make a change that takes you down a certain path that you didn't necessarily anticipate. That's exactly what we did when we introduced Portfolio for JIRA at Cerner. 
But before I get too far ahead of myself and start talking about portfolio and how we use it, I'd like to set the stage for you all so you know exactly where we're coming from. All of our teams were already using JIRA to track their day-to-day -day activities, but many of them were using external tools and processes to plan and forecast their team's work. We didn't have a standardized approach to planning or any application that was used across the board, so most teams were using whatever they could get their hands on. Teams were using Excel, Word documents, emails, JIRA Kanban and Agile boards, or other tools. Since each team planned differently, executives and clients were never able to get a good idea about timelines and next steps, and oftentimes teams were using stale data since they weren't pulling from the source of truth, JIRA. Since there was so much confusion and conflicting information due to teams not using the true source of truth, we started noticing effects of poor planning in other areas, like Cerner Associates missing both internal and external dates and commitments. We also saw that inconsistent messaging and information was being shared both internally and externally, which only added to our users' confusion. With all of the issues we just covered, we realized we needed to make a change to our planning processes in order to continue to improve our relationships with our clients and improve our efficiency internally. In order to really be successful, we needed to introduce a new planning methodology. This meant we also needed to look at integrating new tools into a feature suite, which would allow teams to follow the new process as efficiently as possible. As Cerner started looking to streamline and organize our planning methodologies, we realized we needed to start using a central planning tool. After much deliberation, we started looking to implement SAFE throughout Cerner, but particularly for our client-facing development teams. As a part of this, we needed a new tool that integrated with our source of truth and also allowed us to integrate with external tools. The best choice was to implement Portfolio for JIRA. As Cerner committed to using Portfolio, we knew we needed to take some important steps to really get Portfolio embedded into our processes. We identified a couple of key areas to focus on as we first started to roll it out. So one of the first things that we did was we started a pilot group with a number of representatives from all of our most important and influential business areas and products. This helped us identify areas where we may have needed to adjust our plans for a portfolio and helped us win key stakeholders as super users for the tool. These super users became important advocates for portfolio and helped us spread the word as we went live with the tool. We also had to win over management to ensure portfolio was representative from the top levels and down to the entire organizations. Presenting the pilot's findings and highlighting some of the best features of portfolio really helped us win people over. As a part of this process, we found that the most important features were shared releases or versions, as well as scenarios. Based on our pilot's feedback and the feedback from management, we started to really push on those two areas to engage more interest in the tool. Once we had confirmed our use of portfolio, we started figuring out how best to configure it so that it would allow each project manager the flexibility they needed to plan the way they wanted while still adhering to our defined processes. The first way we started this was by customizing our JIRA structure to support some important integrations for our JIRA 2 teams. We created an integration between an external financial and project planning tool, and then auto created a custom JIRA issue type called project from that tool. We then forced users to link their epic stories and defects to the project issue before each subsequent issue was closed. We then customized our portfolio's hierarchy for JIRA 2 to map the project as the highest level with epics and other issue types underneath that. Since there were some teams and project managers that didn't use or need to use the project issue type, they used epics as their top level and linked issues beneath that to get the information they needed. Another challenge we faced in some of our other JIRA instances that were not as standardized as our JIRA 2 instance was that there were many teams who wanted to use portfolio, but they were not development teams and therefore did not use fixed versions to represent actual code deliveries. 
and as many of you probably already know, the version or release information in Portfolio was critical to using the auto-calculation algorithms available in Portfolio version 2. To get around this, we ended up working with these teams to hack the version logic, and they started using versions to represent a delivery date. So for example, if they committed to providing a client with new documentation by a given date, the version would represent that commitment. This allowed users to use Portfolio to its fullest extent. The customizations and adjustments we made all came about after working directly with our users and listening to their feedback. Since we set up two unique hierarchies and came up with new ways to represent different types of projects, that went a long way to helping us keep all of our project managers happy. Showing the attention and deference to our users also really helped us win over new portfolio users. Probably the biggest hurdle we faced during our implementation and adoption was training our users and convincing them to start using a new tool. With the shift to portfolio, we realized we needed to release a number of internal documents, education, and training sessions to help get people up to speed. Hosting regular live education sessions helped users get up to speed, and so did creating internal documentation which covered Cerner's processes, as well as linked out to Atlassian's documentation. We also represented portfolio at various tech talks and monthly and quarterly project management meetings, and at the end of the day, all of these steps helped us get portfolio out there and helped create a strong but small user base. So that's a little bit about where we started with Portfolio. And now I'd like to talk a little bit more about how we've evolved. When we first implemented Portfolio, only a select group of teams were using it regularly as a part of their planning processes. Most of these teams were in our standardized instance, JIRA2. We knew that we needed to make sure more project managers came on board, but the question was how? Luckily for us, Cerner started introducing organizational and process-driven changes, which forced us to rethink how project managers were using Portfolio for JIRA. Cerner started shifting more towards big room planning and safe methodologies, and since that direction was being pushed to the entire company as a whole, we were able to trickle that down to our portfolio users. In order to comply with these changes, we also adopted a couple of new features within JIRA itself. We implemented a new JIRA project and issue type called Backlog. Backlog was used by teams to store their solutions roadmap within JIRA. If a backlog item should be implemented, users created a project in our financial tool, which automatically created the project issue as mentioned before. Once the project issue was created, they would create their individual stories or epics to track their work. In order for teams to get a really good look at what they were working on, both in their roadmap and in their active queues, we really started pushing Portfolio as the best method to track everything in one custom view. Around this time, Portfolio also released version 3. Since version 3 changed how the tool scheduled issues, teams found it a lot easier to get up to speed on Portfolio. They also found it much easier to actually plan their issues within Portfolio plans themselves. Teams loved the new UI and the overall new experience in the tool, and really took a lot of enjoyment out of using new enhancements provided by Atlassian. Things like being able to filter by labels, add additional custom field types, and so on, really brought a lot more people on board. Once we upgraded to Portfolio version 3 and started implementing our new backlog strategy, we really started seeing our adoption shift. In Jira 2, we saw a huge increase in our number of users and plans. We went from 100 plans to over 300 plans, and we went from 20 programs to 32 programs, so we didn't really have the biggest jump there. We saw the biggest jump in users in JIRA 3. We went from only 50 plans to over 200 in a very short time frame, and we went from 7 programs to 20 programs. After all was said and done, we learned a lot as we implemented Portfolio and later Portfolio version 3. There were a couple of takeaways that we learned after implementing Portfolio for JIRA. First was flexibility is key. 
We really had to be flexible and adaptive as the directions within Cerner and our priorities as a whole started changing. So it was really important for us to be able to change with the times and make sure that we were adhering to all of our best practices and the direction of the company. Next was education. Without good documentation from both ourselves and from Atlassian, I don't think we would have been able to get as many people on board as quickly as we did. Next was engaging our users directly. By going to our users and really listening to their feedback, taking their feedback to our support team or back to Atlassian themselves, it was really beneficial in hearing more about what people wanted to see within portfolio. And we were able to fix any items that came up or readjust our thinking as needed. Last and not least was we really started to lean on our TAMs through Atlassian. By working with our TAMs, we were able to provide real-time feedback. We were able to help get our questions answered in a very quick manner. We were also able to help uh, our TAMs kind of bump up some of our defects and open bugs that we had open. So they were really beneficial in helping us move things along and progress our use of portfolio for JIRA. So that is how Cerner used Portfolio for JIRA to keep all of our project managers. I hope everyone had a good time listening to this talk and enjoys the rest of their summit experience.